Hi, this is Shoma Jerkinson. I'm the chair of the School of Business at Rasmussen College on the Brooklyn Park campus. I'd like to invite you to join me in this presentation about market segmentation, where I go over four segmentation categories. Now, segmentation can seem very, very complicated, but at its very basic root, the most important thing to remember is that you're trying to understand your consumer, and it's easier to understand your consumer if you can group them into discrete categories. So the first step in segmentation is dividing a large group of consumers into categories. As I mentioned in my previous video about why segmentation is important, you know, if you try to speak to all adults 18 plus, how do you truly get to understand them? Secondly, once you've divided this large group into smaller groups and segments, then you're looking for the common characteristics. All right? And the rest of the video is about how some of the methods are that you can group consumers into common characteristics to better speak to them with your marketing message. So there are four segmentation categories we're going to go over today. The options for today's video include geographic, so at its root is geography, so we're going to talk about that psychographic, and at its root is psychology, so we're trying to understand the mind. Demographic, and when you think of demographic, I want you to think about things that you'd find in a census, right? We just had a census in 2000, um, and then again in 2010. So um, that's those are the kind of categories you're thinking of there. And finally, behavioral. So this is how the consumers behave around their purchase decisions, okay? All of these three categories also include behaviors, but the behavioral category has to do with the consumer's purchase decisions. So let's look at each in turn. So when you think geographic, think it, uh, probably the broadest stroke that you can consider is that of the country, right? What country are you marketing in and how do you target your message per company? So for example, Cheetos. We know Cheetos marketing here. We've got Chester Cheetos. We know what they taste like. There's different brands, or sorry, different line extensions. But what about in China? Cheetos is very popular in China. And you notice not only is the language on the package different, so are the graphics and the colors, and we'll talk about flavors as well. So when you're segmenting by country, it's not enough just to translate. You really need to understand the consumers in that country. All right. So the next one, climate. So not only can you take a stroke of one or more countries, but what about the difference within our country itself? For example, Polaris um, is very popular. It started here in the Minneapolis Twin Cities area, and um, snowmobiles is, is the core brand, all right? But as there have been fewer and fewer days and temperature for snowmobiling, they've expanded not only into watercraft, but also into ATVs. So they are taking a look at the climate across the country and then targeting their message to consumers who would use different products. How about though customer needs in even a smaller slice? What about, let's, let's take this example of gardening, okay? Now, if I have a customer in a highly urban area, I'm going to market my gardening supplies to them very differently than I would to my customers in a rural area. Um, obviously, there's going to be much more volume here. There's going to be different types of seeds. There's going to be different types of equipment. Here, you're going to see tractors. Here, you're going to see gardening kits. Um, urban gardens, very different than farms. So I can target my message instead of trying to sell gardening equipment regardless of the need the customer has based on their geography. So geography is one. Now, psychographic, if you recall, goes back to the psychology of the consumer. All right? And you'll notice as we go through, there's going to be overlap. Rarely is your profile based on just one segment. You might incorporate pieces of different segments. Okay. So in psychographic, let's take a look first at personality. All right? Who might you visualize? when you look at this Cheetos Flaming Hot? Is it going to be the soccer mom who's taken them to her kid's soccer game and it's a bunch of you know grade schoolers, early in school? Is, is this gonna be the flavor profile, the personality profile? I don't think so. This is who Frito-Lay has in mind with Flaming Hot Cheetos. Not that there aren't moms and kids that would like it, but this is their one customer, the primary personality of the person they will speak to with Flaming Hot Cheetos. All right. But what about values and attitudes? 
All right, it's another way to look at the psychographic profile. Who might buy this product? Natural Cheetos, white cheddar, you still want a snack, but you want it to be healthy, you want it to be better for your body, you might visualize this person. All right, she is active, um, still wants the flavor, but has a very different attitude about her snacking than the gentleman in the previous slide. All right. Another way to look at psychology or psychographics is to speak to a group of people with similar hobbies or interests. Nature Valley Granola does a very good job with this, uh, with General Mills. Now, one of the um, profiles they have, their psychographic profile for Nature Valley, is a very active, outdoor person. Notice I didn't say male or female or age. It's a person who is active outdoors. They're not as concerned with the calories in the snack as they are that it's portable, that it has a high um, amount of protein to keep them going, and that it is um, a, has a, a more natural uh, flavor and um, composition because they are interested in that type of hobby or interest. So portability, um, energy, and natural ingredients is what this consumer with hobbies and interests with hiking, biking, skiing, golf are more interested in. Um, and that's why Nature Valley granola bars and other products appeal to them. All right. So if psychographics is about psychology, and, and it's difficult to ascertain psychology. Demographics is far more about the things we measure in the census, right? Age and gender. You know, we can talk about gender all we want, but our gender roles shift um, to such a degree that I would rather talk about age today. So I want to show you this picture here. Um, this couple, very typical when you think of a realtor selling a house, right? New couple starting out, getting married, thinking of having kids. You know, they're going to have the icicle lights. They need a, a room to expand for a nursery. The way you speak to this consumer will be very different than the way an agent would speak to this consumer. Their children are gone. Their grandchildren uh, may be grown. They're empty nesters. They're looking for smaller square footage. They're looking for ease of care for their home. You're going to sell very differently and market very differently to this consumer than you would to this consumer. And the way you're segmenting them is based on their age. So you're trying to understand their needs based on age. Another way to look at that is income and education. Now, can you imagine the consumer to whom you'd sell a Rolex? Obviously, high income, typically highly educated. All right, Your message to this consumer has to be different than your message to this consumer, who is still well-educated, but does, has more of a middle to middle upper income. All right, And your message may be about aspiration or use or benefits is going to be different to sell this product and the consumer to whom you know this product would appeal. All right. Let's look at another demographic. Now, you've got religion, language, and ethnicity. You notice I didn't say the word race. There's so much more involved than simply race. All right, but there's also more involved than language. So let's take a look at this example again from Cheetos. Okay. Now, you could have just regular old, let's say, flaming hot Cheetos, all right? And you can translate into Spanish for a highly Hispanic area. But Frito-Lay knows their target and knows that that isn't enough. They want to go a little further. They've learned that not only language, but the ethnicity influence the taste profile. So they have in this market a chili lime Cheeto, and they've translated it into Spanish. So be able to segment their market by this demographic, they're able to truly understand what that consumer needs and then market their message and their products and their services to this specific consumer. So the last one I'm going to talk about under demographics is life stage. Now what do you notice that is different about these two families? Okay, let's not go with the obvious, but look at this. Look at the age of the children here. All right, very different needs for this consumer than this consumer with a household with infants. All right, household characteristics in this case, I'm talking about life stage. Even when you say that you're going to market with household to households with kids, you have different segments even within households with kids. So, households with kids. 10 to 17 are going to have different needs than households with kids 0 to 5 and 6 to 10. Okay. Now, what about households without kids? Same thing. This couple, 
without kids is going to have very different needs than this couple without kids. Do you understand the needs of this segment versus the needs of this segment? And if so, how will you speak to that demographic? Okay. So now we're going to go into behavior. And as I mentioned, of course, all of the other segments include behavior. But in this behavioral category, we're talking about purchasing behavior. All right. So let's look at this. You might purchase products based on the benefits. Okay. So I don't know if you guys have had, you know, I, I, I have this little thing. Um, in the green bean casserole I make for the holidays, I prefer to use cream of chicken soup instead of cream of mushroom. I know it's very controversial, but um, that's how I choose to use this soup that is made for cooking. And we've all have stories about our parents, our moms who have used the soup for cooking, okay? But there is another benefit that would influence purchase behavior. So more and more women and moms are working now and they're also if they're not working they're all very busy lifestyle with their children so in this case I might talk to my consumer differently who needs a portable nutritious um, packaging for my soup versus my soup to cook bigger holiday family meals so I might segment my communication based on the benefits of my offering okay now, another way to think about behavioral segmentation is the degree of loyalty. Now, I don't know, I think everyone in the U.S. anyway has had Campbell's chicken noodle soup, um, particularly when they're not feeling well, and there is a loyalty to that brand, Campbell's. But how do you influence more loyalty with your consumer, or how do you speak to your loyal consumers and show that you understand what is important to them? Well, in this case, um, Campbell's has understood that the consumer who purchases the basic chicken noodle con soup condensed um, is also very interested in um, issues of women's health, right? So in order to continue to develop loyalty with this consumer, Campbell's has um, created the, the pink um, breast cancer awareness uh, product line at the appropriate time to benefit that cause and also develop more loyalty with their consumer. All right, now let's look at rate of use. You can imagine that households with kids 6 to 10 um, are going to buy a lot of uh, Campbell's soup. All right, that is one of the common things that kids love, um, so you're going to buy it in quite a bit of volume. Now, so how do you influence this consumer? How do you talk to them and get them to buy more? Well, perhaps you bring in some licensed characters, and maybe they'll buy four cans of the regular chicken noodle soup, and they'll buy one or two of the licensed brands, all right, because you know they're already buying a lot of your soup, how do you penetrate just a little bit more into that market? Speak to them differently. Well, licensed characters is a way to do that. All right. So rate of use. Now, if I am only buying one or two cans of soup, I might try Campbell's because my child wants a particular licensed character. So there's two ways to look at that. All right, so the four categories of segmentation that I've gone over in our video today include geographic, where you're looking at location, the country, the climate, the needs of particular locations, all right, or psychographic, psychology, what personality, values, attitudes, hobbies, or interests does your segment have that will allow you to better market your products and services? Demographic, think of census, age, gender, income, education. Don't just think race. Think of religion, language, ethnicity, household characteristics, and life stage. And finally, behavioral, based on purchasing behavior. What benefits is your segment purchasing? How loyal are they to your product? And what is their rate of use? Thank you for joining me today on Categories for Segmentation. I hope you enjoy the other marketing videos as well.